Hold on and watch this video before you buy Speedovino ECU. Why? Because there are plenty of things to look out for when buying a unit because there are a lot of suppliers out there and there are things you can do wrong when buying or what you shouldn't buy because I have had a lot of experience with tuning several different varieties and some of them just don't work out that well. First of all, there are different varieties of Speedwino ECUs, be it uh, plug and play units or universal units. So these are universal units. You are basically um, snipping off your original connector maybe, or like putting in a pigtail and wiring that in so that you can use your original harness. Or you could do a complete custom harness. That would be the optimal way because you are not using maybe 30, 40 year old wiring. And then there are plug and play ECUs. And these are basically, you have on the ECU itself, you have the standard connector that you have on your stock ECU. You plug the ECU in and if there's a base map on it, the likelihood of it um, being able to start actually is pretty good. It might not run very well, but it may even start. And there's where some problems come in. So, first of all, the plug and play ECUs are kind of expensive. So, if you look at, for example, DIY EFI, which I commonly use or commonly tune, they can be 400 pounds or upwards. And if you are, for example, in the EU, so you have to pay taxes if you import an ECU, and, uh, or you are maybe in the US, while there are other suppliers, uh, you may also have to, uh, have to pay taxes or whatever if you buy from another um, supplier that only has your specific model, maybe in the EU. Then it may actually make sense to go for a mega squirt alternative that is plug and play. For example, uh, the MS3 Mini in the EU. So if you're living in the EU, this is about like somewhere between seven and 800 euros offers a lot more functionality, is a lot faster and works in general just a lot better. When comparing that to a DIY EFI plug and play ECU, that's 400 pounds plus you are paying in most countries somewhere between 15 and 25% uh, tax on top of that. And then that gets a lot less attractive because you are then looking at about 550, 600 euros. So you're only paying about 200 euros extra for a lot more functionality, a lot more ECU for your money in general. So when you are looking at that, if you're only paying like 200 euros more, get the mega squirt, you will have a lot more things and a lot more functionality. Why yes, the interface might be a little more complicated or convoluted, <clears throat> the functionality itself and how to tune it is actually not that difficult or not that different. So you can get away with that even if you only know the uh, Speedowino basics. So for example, from my guide. But then comes the other thing. There are certain manufacturers or certain issues that I would highly ad advise against buying. This would be RM or low cost racing solutions and the RM electronics issues, at least the plug and play units, because they seem to be not good. Uh, looking in Facebook groups or reviews in general of these issues, they are very, they have a lot of problems. And I myself, I had uh, three units and a friend of mine also had two of them. And on all of these units, we have had some sort of problem. I was running my MX-5 on one and at one point the car just suddenly wouldn't start anymore. And the ECU, I don't know, the issue apparently uh, just didn't like that anymore. So yeah, I got rid of that. On several other issues, we had problems with the alternator control, fuel pump control. We had problems with the laptop losing connection all the time. We had problems with uh, crank sync or like uh, RPM signal. That was also one of my issues. Then there were problems with the issue only uh, getting five volts. So I would just avoid those in general. One thing I would also avoid is getting the tiny wideband controller on the ECUs. If you are going to get a wideband, well, the tiny wideband is relatively cheap, so you may be tempted to get that because it's already integrated into the ECU, but I have had 
some bad experiences with it and that's actually not that great. So I would advise getting like an AEM gauge. It might be more expensive, but it actually works and you have a gauge where you can read off of and uh, compare the readings of the gauge to the one in Tuner Studio so you know it's actually right if they match up and if they don't, you know there's something wrong. And then there's other issues which I had problems with sometimes. Those are the Speed EFI plug and play units. While they do work in a lot of cases, I had two cases actually where I wasn't able to set correct base timing. And then I had two other instances where the ECU just went up in smoke. And that was two times on, a, on the same customer. Then he bought a Mega Squad unit, which I also tuned. That was completely fine. So take that for what you will. I also asked a friend of mine who is building Speedwino ECUs himself with known good and reliable components. And he told me that the biggest problem with plug and play Speedwino ECUs is, first of all, the stock wiring harness is just on, for example, MX-5 is now getting old. So there may be issues introduced with that. And also another problem is that the Speedwino ECUs apparently don't have as much protections in the circuitry um, than, for example, Mega Squirt plug and play units, and that's why they're experiencing more problems than the Mega Squirt. So the Speedwinos are experiencing more problems than Mega Squirts or other ECUs. On the other hand, the universal ECUs, so such as the C Fox or, for example, now the Drop Bear, which actually supports up to two, uh, up to eight outputs for spark and injection. They, on the, other, on the other hand, I have had working pretty well. I have not had many problems with them. That mostly is because people are actually building their own wiring harness and therefore they have basically new wiring in comparison to like maybe 30, 40 year old wiring. So that works a lot better. They are also a lot cheaper. So a lot easier to get into. You can convert a lot of cars much on a much tighter budget to those um, standalone ECUs. So I can recommend those. And if you also want a high quality unit, I will put a link to an email of my friend in the description. He is in the EU. So if you are in the EU and need a Speedwino ECU that is universal using a good quality plug, so that is easy to pin, hit him up. It may be a little bit more expensive than maybe DIY EFI or Speed EFI. So you are getting known good components and this is what I actually would trust um, when buying an ECU. But also obviously DIY EFI, I've also made good experiences. I'm running their ECU on my car. So I can't say anything negative about those as well. That's so much on what you need to know before buying a Speedwino ECU. As you can see, it's pretty important to have a look at a few things before you buy, because otherwise you might be a little bit sad after uh, if your car doesn't work or if something breaks or maybe it's the ECU's fault. That's it from me. I wish you a nice day. Goodbye.